GameStop, Ethereum, Layer 2, NFTs, apes. What do all these things have in common? Partnerships? Maybe. Teamwork? Sure. But most of all, apes together strong. No, but in all seriousness, there's a lot of rumors going around right now that GameStop is going to be creating an NFT marketplace on a layer two platform known as Loop Ring. Now, why does everyone think that GameStop is going to be building this NFT marketplace on Loop Ring? Well, first off, GameStop has suggested through their job postings that they're looking for blockchain developers specifically for NFTs that can also work on layer two. But the biggest tell was the code that was being pushed to Loop Ring's repositories on GitHub that indicated that they might be doing something with GameStop. Not only that, Loopring has started to support NFTs in Q3 of this year, and on top of that, the founder has said they're working with a premium owner who is going to be creating the NFT marketplace instead of them. Now, this is very big because Loopring is still working on a product that's coming out in Q4 of this year, which we'll talk more about in later in the video. But you put GameStop and Loopring together, and you essentially have people aping into Loopring, making 5x their money, selling their houses, putting it all into Loopring. It's insane right now what we're seeing for Loopring. But is it really the end? In this video, I'm going to be discussing what Loopring is, how it works, what we can expect in terms of their new NFT products, and if these rumors are just rumors. On top of that, I will be discussing price potential for Loopring and what I think Loopring will be going up to in terms of my own prediction. So stay tuned for that. So what is Loopring? Loopring is a layer two protocol that was built for the Ethereum network originally to help its biggest issue, which is scalability. Now, I think a lot of us have seen the insane gas prices on Ethereum, specifically with protocols like Uniswap that utilize Ethereum. Hell, I think I myself have probably paid $500 in one swap on Uniswap. And people said car gas prices were bad. Now, what layer two means in terms of loopering is essentially that loopering will take the transactions off chain on their own blockchain, essentially, roll up the transactions into one nice transaction and push that up to Ethereum. Essentially, this will reduce the space that is needed to put on Ethereum, which will reduce the amount of gas that is needed to pay for these transactions. There's a lot more detail than that, but we'll get into that later in the video in terms of how it works. But the main focus of Loopring as a layer two is to create a modular protocol for anyone to come in and create their own decentralized exchange on top of Loopring, on top of any blockchain that Loopring supported that would provide a unique experience that's similar to Robinhood or Vanguard or any other exchange, but at the same time provided at low cost and in a decentralized manner so where you can't have a whole Robinhood situation where they stop you from buying or selling. But who are they? Well, Loopring was actually founded in 2017 by Daniel Wing, a previous software engineer at many reputable companies, one of them being Google, where he was a tech lead and a senior software engineer. As far as pedigree goes, I will say that Daniel Wang has the pedigree to lead a large initiative like Loopring. In terms of Loopring's coin LRC, it was launched in an initial coin offering or ICO and raised about $45 million worth of ETH. However, a large chunk of that had to be returned to investors due to China's active regulations. China and regulation. Name a bigger duo. But from then on, Loopring continued to improve their protocol, improving efficiencies, and by December of 2019, they launched their mainnet as the first decentralized exchange to offer ZK rollups. Then in December of 2020, Loopring launched their Loopring Exchange V2 that was based on their 3.6 version protocol, which also came with the Loopring smart wallet, which we'll actually get into later in the video because it's very important. And now more recently in Q3 of this year, Loopring started to support NFTs, which is why this is a big indicator of why GameStop might be part with Loopring. So now this is where we get into the technical components of how does Loopring work. Now mind you, I will keep this at as high level as possible. So how does Loopring work? Well, the main component of Loopring that makes it so unique, as I mentioned before, is ZK rollups. As I mentioned before, Loopring was the first ones to pioneer ZK rollups in terms of a decentralized exchange. At a high level, with ZK rollups, Loopring essentially processes those transactions off chain that is connected to Ethereum. They roll up all the transactions together in a very secure way and push it up to Ethereum's blockchain. The benefit of rolling up these transactions into one transaction is that it reduces the amount of space that is needed to put on Ethereum's blockchain, which then reduces the fees because it's not as congested. But now let's get a bit more detailed about what are ZK rollups. So ZK rollups are actually made up of two components, Merkle trees and zero knowledge proofs. Let's start with Merkle trees. So Merkle trees is a way of structuring data that's usually in a binary tree format. So in Loopring's case, you'll see that they have a tree with the root at the top, then that feeds into accounts 
that feeds into balance and then that feeds into trade history this is how the ledger is kept track on loop ring because of this format we can start off at the bottom and hash each node or each leaf node and because we're hashing it it turns into a 32 byte unique long format then once we have the hashes of all those leaf nodes you take each neighbor and you hash them together to get the parent node that it leads up to. You do all this hashing all the way up the tree until you get to the Merkle root. And this Merkle root is still 32 bytes and it's unique. And it represents the entire tree full of accounts on loop ring, full of the transactions, everything that occurred on loop ring. Now this is important because essentially we rolled up everything into this one transaction. Because we rolled up everything into this one transaction, when we push it on Ethereum, it takes up way less space. And that's what causes us to save money on gas because we're not congesting Ethereum's network no longer. Now Merkle trees and rollups are just one half of it. Now we need to talk about zero knowledge proofs because we need to ensure that the security is the same and that we can verify on Ethereum that everything was kept secure and nothing was tampered with on Loopring's sidechain. So what are zero knowledge proofs? So zero knowledge proofs were actually created by Algorand founder Sivio Macaulay, who's also a Turing Award winner. Now this is super important because a lot of cryptocurrencies are starting to incorporate ZK rollups or zero knowledge proofs at the very least. And they're doing this because it's way less overhead while also guaranteeing the same amount of security that the originating blockchain, in this case Ethereum, provides. So zero knowledge proofs are essentially a cryptographic way of one party proving to another party that a statement is true. So in Loopring's case, it's trying to prove essentially all the transactions that took place from the previous block to the current block on layer one is all valid. Everything that happened off chain on Ethereum is valid. That is what Loopring is trying to prove. Well, let me provide an example of a zero knowledge interactive proof. You have Alice who isn't colorblind and you have Bob who is colorblind. Alice wants to prove to Bob that two balls that are red and green are different colors without saying that they're red and green. So what she does is she gives the balls to Bob and Bob is allowed to put them behind his back and either switch them around or keep them in the same position. So in this case, let's say Bob put the red ball in his left hand and the green ball in his right hand. Bob put them behind his back, didn't switch them, brought them back out, and Alice would say, you didn't switch them. Now you might say, oh, it's a one in two chance. She could have guessed. Now they run this simulation thousands of times, exhausted because they're running it thousands of times, <laughs> but essentially they run it thousands of times and Alice gets it right every single time. Now the probability of Alice guessing it right thousands of times is negligible. Like it's almost impossible. Now, essentially she was able to prove that they are different colors without saying what colors they are. She was able to essentially hide the content, which in this case is the colors red and green, and prove it that they were different colors. Now, this is a proof of an interactive version. What Loopring uses is actually ZK Snarks, which is a non-interactive version, but we're not gonna get into the details of that in this video because it has to do with a lot of math and a lot of cryptography that's out of scope for this. But how do these Merkle trees and these zero knowledge proofs connect? Essentially, the beauty of this is the Merkle trees, which represent all the data information that's on Loopring for accounts, balances, transfers, everything, can be updated off chain very quickly, and the tree can just be updated consistently, right? The values can keep switching it doesn't really matter once the transactions come in the entire state of the merkle tree can be rolled up into the merkle root then that merkle root can be sent to the ethereum blockchain by an operator which is essentially like a miner along with a zero knowledge proof to ensure that nothing has been tampered with this then gets verified by loopring smart contract that essentially verifies the zero knowledge proof along with the state changes from the previous merkle tree that was sent previously to the new one that was sent and it was verified that hey all these changes make sense. Some of these conditions in the smart contract are just ensuring that basically you had the funds, right? Like you can't send 100 LRC if you only own 10 LRC. Once this is essentially verified on chain, this gets pushed onto the Ethereum blockchain and is pushed ahead. Now this is important because not only do you scale off chain, you also do it in the same secure way because you didn't reveal the content. In this case with Loopring, they don't reveal the addresses and they don't reveal how much was the transactions, but they're still able to prove with these zero knowledge proofs that it's verifiably true. This is astounding because we're able to scale off chain in a much better way. And instead of getting 15 to 25 transactions per second on Ethereum, we can get 2,025 per second on Loopring. And we can guarantee security in the same manner as Ethereum. So now that we know how it Loopring works in terms of scalability and how it ensures security and everything else, where does this come into play with NFTs? Well, we know that Loopring is a likely choice for GameStop. The reason for this is because they need to have scalability. If you purchase NFTs right now on Ethereum, the gas fees are too insane and there's too much of a barrier for people to get into NFTs. GameStop is smart. They want to create an NFT marketplace that's built on layer two that reduces the barriers for retail investors to come in, purchase 
NFTs, mint NFTs, trade NFTs, and operate in their ecosystem. And why did they choose to use Loopring? Well, like I said, Loopring provides the same security as Ethereum off chain and helps to bring transaction speed from 15 to 25 to 2025 transactions per second. Not only that, the gas cost of NFTs will be reduced by 400x, according to the founder Daniel Wang. As we know, investors in GameStop is full of retail investors, but retail investors don't have the same cash as a large capital funds. So in order to bridge that gap and make sure that people can actually partake in their ecosystems, they're really making sure that they build on layer two for retail investors to come in at a reduced cost and not have to worry about fees. Now I will say for using Loopring for NFTs, there is a catch. Of course. The catch is essentially with Loopring's wallet that they created, in order to create a smart wallet on Loopring, you have to pay the Ethereum gas fees because it has to connect the layer one to the layer two. The issue with that, the gas fees can be upwards of $350, which ends up being the same barrier that they were trying to solve with NFTs. But I will say as a caveat, this provides more proof that Loopring is partnering with GameStop. Now, why you might ask? Well, the biggest product that Loopring is trying to release right now in Q4 is their counterfactual wallet. This wallet is essentially a minimalistic version of the current smart wallet they have that is only on layer two, but provides the functionality for NFTs. You don't have to pay fees to create the wallet, which essentially reduces that barrier for people to come in. And you can do the functionality of creating NFTs and trading it and doing everything for NFTs. My guess as to why Loopring is trying to get this counterfactual wallet out of Q4 of this year is because they're going to announce their partnership very soon with GameStop. By creating this counterfactual wallet, they allow everyone to come in at no cost and GameStop can essentially announce their NFT marketplace and people can begin to mint NFTs, trade NFTs, and do everything for NFTs on the Loopring ecosystem. But before they create this counterfactual wallet, they have that barrier of $350. So this counterfactual wallet will serve as a temporary solution until Ethereum 2.0 comes out to reduce the fees to deploy to layer one. But as of now, this serves as the proper solution for minting NFTs and trading NFTs on the ecosystem. I think once this gets announced, along with all the other rumors, along with the other evidence that we found, I think Loopring is going to be partnering with GameStop. So what I like to do when I try to find the valuation of a cryptocurrency and what it should be, I compare it to a competitor. In this case, the competitor is Matic. If we look at Matic at its peak, Matic had a 15 billion market cap. Right now, Loopring is around 4 billion market cap. Now you might say this might be a buy the rumors, sell the news. My thought process is if Loopring and GameStop make a partnership, the retail investors from both of these ecosystems are so strong that I think it's going to raise the price, especially because there's a need for that token LRC to pay for the fees on the network. And now, like I said, I compared it to Matic where Matic was a market cap of 15 billion at its, at its height. I think Loopring will see that same height in a continued bull run, which would put the price of Loopring at $10. And that is my prediction. Now, this is not financial advice, but what I did is I have allocated about 2% of my portfolio for short-term trade on Loopring. I think a partnership will be announced within the next few months, considering how fast they're trying to get this counterfactual wallet out. I think with this partnership, I think it's for me an easy 3X, but that's what I'm going for. Like I said, not financial advice. This is just what I'm doing. But like I said, at the end of the day, there's a lot of evidence that Loopring is going to be partnering with GameStop. Everything from GameStop looking to build on layer two for an NFT marketplace with Loopring posting in their GitHub code commits about GameStop, along with them supporting NFTs in Q3 of this year and even trying to make it more affordable for Q4 of this year and talking about a premium owner for their NFT marketplace and them not building their own. I think at the end of the day, this premium owner is GameStop. I think it's very likely, and that's why I'm investing into Loopring right now. But what do you guys think? Do you think Loopring is partnering with GameStop? Do you think this is all just rumors? Do you think this is a buy the rumors, sell the news? Let me know in the comments below. I genuinely want to know. Also, if you can, let me know in the comments what you thought about my explanation of how Loopring works. I am trying to get better at explaining the technical components of it. So if you can give me feedback in the comments, I would greatly appreciate it. On top of that, guys, hit the like button. It really helps get my video out there so other people can see it. It lets me know if I'm doing something right. On top of that, guys, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button. I'll have a lot more videos where I talk about different cryptocurrencies and the technical components behind it and help explain it to make it easier for you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. And remember, apes strong together.